This propeller reduces fuel consumption by 33% while providing the same thrust. Let me introduce the Variomatic prop to you. It's the first in-flight adjustable propeller for paramotors in the world. It's continuous, it's fully automatic, and the good news is it's bolt-on. Everything on an aircraft must have a reason. Ignore the status quo, imagine from scratch, and build what you can justify with science. Fail five times to succeed once. This is how we innovate paramotors, and for you, understanding the science behind will make you a smarter pilot. In-flight adjustable propellers have been around for a while, especially in fixed-wing uh, aircraft, but they have never successfully implemented in paramotors. And when I mentioned this idea to our propeller guy, Dushan, at first he rejected it because he believed that in-flight adjustable systems are just too heavy, bulky, expensive, difficult to operate, slow to operate, but his primary argument that they are not worth it because Paramotors have such a small speed range that we fly so slow that we wouldn't really benefit from adjusting the pitch. We proved him wrong. We succeeded to design a system that is lightweight, relatively cheap, easy to operate, it's actually fully automatic and it's totally beneficial because it saves 30% of fuel. How cool is that? So let's tell the story from the very beginning and development of any prop starts with this one. This is the ground adjustable propeller. So how you design a propeller? You come up with a profile, you do all the calculations and designs. You need to verify the pitch because the calculations might be a little bit off. So you build a ground adjustable where you can adjust the pitch of the blades and you just fine tune the pitch to, to perfection with the engine, to match the engine specifications. Now, the principle is very simple. If you set the pitch smaller, the engine will rev up higher, it will reach higher maximum RPM, you get full power and easier start. If you increase the pitch, the prop will stop the engine earlier, so it will not reach 8,600, only maybe 7,000, but you will have a better fuel economy on cruise. It's like shifting into the sixth gear. Now, why we are not using these kind of propellers uh, on paramotors if, if they are so great. The reason is simple, they are not very user-friendly. So you need a special tool to adjust this. It takes probably 15 minutes to make it correctly. And if not done correctly, it's actually dangerous because if you have a different pitch here and here, you can cause vibration, damage your prop, damage the engine, you lose warranty and so on. That's why we don't supply these propellers with our paramotors. We only use them for development and some competition pilots use that. We were thinking of designing a propeller that would have the benefits of an adjustable, ground adjustable propeller without all the disadvantages. That means you would have a prop that you can set for max power or fuel economy if you wish, but without all the hassle and dangers accompanied. So basically we came up with an idea of a prop that you connect this way, but there would be a little play. There will be some gap in between so you can change the angles of those, of those plates. And there would be an insert in between and depending what you want, you use the insert. So if you want full power, it will be lower pitch. If you want full economy, you take an insert that will increase the pitch, but the insert will define the pitch on both blades equally. So there's no risk of having it set wrongly and you will just have two full power, full economy and it's super safe. Sounds cool, doesn't it? So in order to design a two step adjustable prop, we obviously need to know the angles. Having the angle for full power, it's easy. It's 10.1 degrees. That's the prop we are using on scout paramotors as standard. But for fuel economy, we needed to find the right pitch. And as we were increasing the pitch, we, we could see reduction in fuel consumption. And at 13.1 degrees, that is three degrees more than standard setting, we had the best results saving 33% of fuel. Now it comes at a cost. The first things you notice immediately, you lose max power. I mean, I was running like a gazelle in the Serengeti uh, on takeoff and actually the loss in full power was dramatic. So basically it was about how to find the, the setting that it's still doable for takeoff and, and great for cruising. Now there's another underlying problem that we found out with, that we didn't know existed and that's 
heat. Basically, with the pitch set too high, engine revving at full power only 7500 RPM, it was badly, badly overheating. And then we realized that the two-step propeller is a no-go. We just cannot sell a propeller that would save fuel, but you are so close to burning a hole in a piston, it doesn't work. Actually, I wanted to give up the idea, but Stefan was the guy to say, hey, can we just make a prop that has it all? It's not two-step, but it's adjustable. You take off at 10 degrees, full power, short, short run. You climb at full power, and then you increase the pitch for cruise to save fuel economy. Have it all without the sacrifices. Here comes in-flight adjustable propeller, finally. And now we come to the differences between the paramotors and fixed wings when it comes to in-flight adjustment of the pitch. Now, primarily, fixed wing aircraft have massive speed range, so, and they have different scenarios. So basically, you start with takeoff where you have zero speed at full power and you need low pitch. Then you climbing at high speed, full power, and you need medium pitch for that. And when you start cruising, you are flying at high speed, you reduce the power to medium, and you need to increase the pitch to the maximum to gain efficiency. And it's so complicated in different scenarios that the in-flight adjustment of the pitch is done by the pilot from the cabin. Now with paramotors it's a lot more simple. We have just two cases, full power low pitch, medium power high pitch for cruising. So can we come up with a solution that would be fully automatic based on RPM slash power, just like they have these automatic gearboxes in scooters, something as simple as that. So, in order for the prop to work fully automatic, we need force that is directly related to RPM. And it can be either centrifugal force or aerodynamic forces. We decided for the aerodynamic forces. Let me show how it works. So the center of lift of the propeller blade is somewhere here. And we, des we designed this blade in a way that the center of rotation is slightly in front of it. So, the prop has a natural tendency to pitch down. The prop has a natural tendency to pitch down. So, this spring is pushing it down into the 13 degrees. And as we are reaching higher and higher RPM, the aerodynamic forces increases at roughly somewhere 6,000 RPM. Those aerodynamic forces will overcome this spring and change the pitch to 10 degrees and you enjoy full power climb. So the name of the game is spring versus lift. We started to calculate the center of lift, calculate the forces, convert it to torque, estimate what kind of springs we need. And then we needed to design a system. We came up with three different ideas and it was quite complicated because it's so little. The difference between 10 and 13 degrees has a massive effect on fuel consumption, but it's just like 0.76 millimeters. So the system needs to be extremely precise with minimum tolerances. It's literally, just imagine how much three degrees are. So we have designed several systems and finally we came to this decision to use these levers actually to, because here the three degrees, you at least can see what it is doing. Then we build it. Great thanks to, to the guys in the CNC machining. They did an amazing job because it's really, really complicated inside and difficult to manufacture. Then Stefan assembled it and boom, it worked on the first try. It was incredible. It worked on the first try. Ready? Yeah, I don't know where to stand. I'm going to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for okay. that. <laughs> so safe start on. Okay, good. I can totally so, see it how it works. I, I've, I've, I've seen the red. I've seen the green. Seriously? I've seen the green. So it works and it goes back and I see it. It fucking works. So the system works, but need, we need to we needed to fine-tune it to, to to make it work precisely. And for that, we actually tested 10 different springs with, with different adjustments to make the prop shift when we need it, which is roughly at 6,500. So until 6,500, you're flying at 13 degrees, which is fuel economy, 
or cruise and when you go to full power the aerodynamic forces will overcome that spring So, good. so so the thing is you don't feel the difference it's like Julian Dudek was on the same thing no this is actually no, good kidding. news <laughs> no this is actually yeah, good yeah, news yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't feel the difference it's just it just runs like a regular prop that's uh, not the point but, but one thing I've noticed immediately on level flight it was a lot quieter is it, it was flying at 5,000 Wow. My with the Dudek warp, I, I used to fly 5,800. With uh, this one, I used to fly 5,600. And okay. with this, it was 5,000. Perfectly sustainable RPM. So I could hold the 5,000 for 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 three minutes in constant. It's perfectly stable. It's just five, six hundred RPM lower. This is not the end of the story. There is a lot of work ahead of us. So in the next video, we will do exact in-flight measurements to, to actually measure real the benefits of this propeller. And in the next video, we can answer all your questions. So please place them in the comments. I'm really looking forward for the discussion. Thank you very much for watching. And my last note, respect for innovation. Ciao.